My name is Jake Coles. I'm 14 years old and I'm the founder of iCoolKid and the newly launched Thread Media Company. The idea for iCoolKid was based off of a show and tell presentation I did when I was about 8 years old at school. The central tenant of the company is a website aimed at 8 to 15 year olds who wanted to stay up to date on all things trending around the world. We had visitors from about 190 different countries, including people as far as ways like Bhutan, Fiji, Burma, Uruguay, Bangladesh was in there. Yeah. Two and a half years after launching iCoolKid, we decided to reposition and restructure the company. We wanted to create a digital space dedicated to Generation Z, my generation, that was shaped by youth culture and powered by social change. We wanted to create a place where young people could share the latest trending topics while also engaging in dialogue about the issues that were relevant and important to them. Our new company is called Thread Media. It's a publishing, consulting and production company aimed at Generation Z and it focuses on trending topics as well as activism, empowerment, equality, positive social change, that kind of thing. The new company hopes to be an energising force that will galvanise social spirit and mobilise like-minded people to affect change and support the Generation Z movement globally. We hope to build out a global network of young people interested in journalism that will work closely with our in-house team to produce timely, user-generated content. Uh, they'll be able to use their unique local knowledge, local knowledge and insights to access and produce a unique pieces of journalism that reflect the pulse of Generation Z in their own words that our in-house team wouldn't normally be able to create. We feel like a really strongly defined shift towards intelligent, fact-based, gender non-biased content that educates, empowers and inspires young people in a unifying and inclusive way. And we hope that Thread does just that. Generation Z poses some very unique aspects about them relative to other generations that have come before us. They're known for being really tech-savvy, multitaskers, outspoken, opinionated, volunteers and activists. We really, and it's actually quite important, we really, really value transparency, authenticity and originality in our brands, and that is crucial. We experienced a financial crisis, which, as I said, means that we're going to have to work harder than we thought our parents worked, and our parents worked harder than their grandparents did. It's those very attributes that have led us to having a tension span of 8 seconds, which, to be fair, I think it's a bit unfair. I think we have a big attention span for things that we're actually interested in, but our filter is much finer. We're adept researchers and we're very informed. I mean, with Google at the tip of our fingers, we're going to fact check every single fact that we see. We have a strong desire to affect global change. We feel super socially responsible. We're competitive, but we're not a failure failure. We, we have this thing called pragmatic entrepreneurs. We're worried about the future. We're super conservative and we're risk averse, especially about money. We're focused on the consequences of all our financial decisions. As I said, we believe we have to work harder than our parents once did to avoid having a financial crisis like we experienced. Because we can remember when our schools didn't have supplies, when our parents couldn't put food on the table, and we don't want to go through that again and make our children walk through that. Today, Generation Z make up 32% of the global population and account for $5 trillion in hard and soft spending power, making Generation Z, my generation, the most financially influential generation ever. Now, more than 50% of Generation Z are interning while in high school. 70% want to start their own business, and 15% of those will do it before high school is even over, making us, Generation Z, the most entrepreneurial generation ever, hands down. Just last year, Generation Z entered the full-time workforce, and by 2020, they'll make up 40% of consumers in US, Europe, and brick economies. Given those impressive stats, companies are going to want to gain their share of mind, and with share of mind comes share of wallet. But they're going to need to do something to understand Generation Z have been shaped by the two defining features of the last decade, the financial crisis and smartphones. Generation Z will have significant impact on all the aspects of today as we know it, not in the future but right now. Think about this, today schools, companies, brands, organisations and even governments are giving Generation Z a seat at the table. No one can afford to go it alone. Their success, and in some cases, their survival, depends on it. 
We are definitely witnessing a huge shift across the corporate landscape. None more timely than that of corporate social responsibility, or CSR. It's not enough to just align yourself with relevant causes and social programs anymore. Social responsibility, CSR, has to need to be your company's operating system. It needs to be at the core of every process you want to take and everything you do and every decision you make. It's not just a seasonal campaign anymore or an add-on feature. It's the new corporate architecture. There are three types of activists to look out for. Activist consumers, and these are the people who will hold companies to a high standard and buy from companies with similar values. There are your consumers. They want companies to take a position on social and environmental issues, and sometimes that can be quite divisive. Then you have your activist employees. Generation Z want to work for an organisation that aligns with their social compass. It could be the deciding factor when they choose their career and the company they want to work for. And finally, you have activist brands and companies. Activist brands and companies need to target Generation Z using a good brand advocacy strategy. Companies need to invest in and communicate about their programmes, because in the interview process, it's quite likely that Generation Z will actually turn on the interviewer and say, what are you doing for social change? And if you don't have a good response for that, Generation Z aren't going to want to work for you. I think we're also going to see a big impact on education going forward. The process of putting a computer or an iPad in the hands of every student is well on its way. And the gamification style of apps for fitness and learning are hugely successful, especially for language learning like apps like Duolingo and things like that. Firstly, VR. It's going to make learning immersive. We remember 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see, and 90% of what we do or simulate. Just imagine flying through the bloodstream, learning about the cells that you encounter on your way there, or traveling to Mars to inspect the surface for life. That's what you can do with VR. Secondly, machine learning is making education adaptive and personalized. No two students are identical, whether their backgrounds are different, their intellectual abilities are different, their capabilities and or their attention spans. Different modes of learning, such as reading, seeing, hearing and doing. Advances in machine learning and adaptive learning movement are going to solve this problem substantially. Education systems need to adapt quickly because students today face an unprecedented challenge which we've never had to face before. 800 million jobs globally will be replaced by AI and automation by 2030. That's 10 years from now. Computing jobs will grow at twice the rate of all other jobs and 85% of the jobs needed for 2030's economy have yet to be created in scale. Let me say that again. 85% of the jobs are needed in 2030's economy don't exist yet. Don't forget, the gig workforce is growing at a three times faster rate than the traditional workforce and shows no signs of slowing down. By 2027, half of US workers are expected to be freelance or gig. Let that sink in. The problem that colleges and universities are having is that they're continuing to educate Generation Z the same way they educated Generation X and Generation Y. And that is that they're using a lot higher tech and teaching the same things with the same mindset. How does that prepare them for what's coming? It doesn't. It's really important to know that not all Generation Zers are traditional entrepreneurs. Most are just practical pragmatists, okay? Think of Generation Z's entrepreneurial spirit as actually more of a survival mechanism than a reach for the riches. Okay, traditionally, entrepreneurs began businesses, employed staff, and followed standard business models. Now, entrepreneurship has taken on a wholly different additional meaning. There are two types. You have the original one, the traditional one, and then you have what I call a solopreneur. They simply take their skills and sell them on the market to a variety of buyers. Most are focused on sustainable small wins rather than massive company gains. The problem is that adults do a pretty good job at identifying kids who are super academic or good at throwing a football or playing the piano, but they do a particularly bad job of identifying kids who have the potential of creating a phenomenal new product, service or invention, and we all suffer from that failure every day. Things need to change. Generation Z has come at an age and time where health and wellness is a major consideration of ours. Millennials drove the shift towards less processed foods and almond milk, but for us, that wasn't enough. We, Generation Z, want more from our food supply. We want to have a cruelty-free option, not just a less cruel or a more humane version of meat and seafood. 
Generation Z are quite often what we call a flexitarian. It's a growing movement of people who eat meat and animal products but sparingly, and that's become totally acceptable. Traditionally, millennials, if you're a vegetarian, you're a vegetarian, and if you ever touched meat, then you were a disgrace to the vegetarian community. Nowadays, we're so much more accepting of if someone wants to do something, any little thing to help the environment, good on them. Animal free goods extend to non product foods as well as pet safe households goods such as like makeup, etc. Generation Z are just a bunch of know it alls. We want to know where it comes from, we want to know how it was grown and where it was grown and how it was harvested and how it ended up getting onto our plate. We quite often try to calculate the eco footprint of our meal and I think that restaurants should start putting that on the menu as well as the price. Menus with a clear, in-depth description about ingredients and their sources builds loyalty with Generation Z because they don't think they're being hidden from anything. Dairy. Uh, Non-dairy products are obviously massive and they now outpace the growth of traditional dairy product sales massively. We consume 550% more non-dairy milk than millennials did. We prefer oat milk over coconut, soy and almond milk because it's just more eco-friendly. An interest in vegan food is at an all-time high and it's likely to keep trending. Sales of meat replacements are expected to reach over $5.5 billion by 2020 and that has actually also been a rapid growth. Companies that produce fake meat burgers and sushi made from tomatoes are targeting colleges campuses and testing grounds for their creations and they so far have been an absolutely massive success. Let's talk about the holy grail, gaining share of mind of the consumer. Marketing has become very complex and very difficult because organic reach on social media has fallen to an all-time low. It's no longer viable for reaching big audiences. Brands need to invest in both sponsored and organic content. And also, sponsored content is getting a lot more expensive and a lot less effective. Over 50% of social media users have purchased items they first saw in the paid social ad, so it is worth it, to be fair. Focus on marketing co to consumer values. Don't market to the product features, not the product price, not the product design, but the consumer values. Highlight the social good that you do as a company. That's back to the social responsibility. You have to convey a meaningful story. Because Generation Z, we've become experts of blocking out marketing noise. Focus on direct, individualizing messaging with a heavy emphasis on what's in it for them, the audience, the consumers. Sell the end game. Okay, Generation Z is a benefit and results driven group. Don't sell the product, sell what they're gonna get. Companies need to consider bringing Generation Z on board early and keeping them on side throughout the process, okay? The consumer is like an iceberg from a brand's vantage point. They think they see the whole thing, when really they only see the top 10%. 90% is still underwater. By bringing a member of Generation Z onto your board, you can reveal the other 90% to the boardroom making them a partner and a co-creator from beginning to end. They'll get the trends right, they'll get the vocab right, they'll get the messaging right first time around. And you're not gonna make costly mistakes like Pepsi, Dior, Gillette and Listerine did, okay? They spent a lot of money and they had dire errors and they got so much backlash for it. Had they had a member of Generation Z on their board, that wouldn't have happened. Generation Z are gonna have 17 jobs across five different careers in 15 different households. There will be no stone unturned by Generation Z. All aspects of daily life and work life need to be thought through very carefully by schools, companies, organizations, and governments. Otherwise, Generation Z are gonna build it ourselves and you're gonna be the ones coming to us for a job. The future is already here, it's just not very evenly distributed. Generation Z is about to change that. Thanks so much.